I have some sort of story for you. A couple of weeks ago, I asked you all what color you would like to see a Vintage Singer 15 painted and you all responded with apple red. I then asked if you would like to see gold, silver, black, or white decals. Everyone voted for gold, so that is what I did. I did record that entire process, but unfortunately, there was a Windows update that completely destroyed my machine and caused me to lose all my files and I haven't been able to recover them. So what I'm going to do is basically talk you through that particular process and also put a few pictures and clips up that I have from an SD card. So um, let's just get into it. Hello, I have a special friend joining me here in the greenhouse today. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just out here checking on my sewing machine. This is what it looks like so far and everything else looks pretty good. There are a few places where I'm going to have to sand it down and respray, but that is okay. I just can't do it today because today is a super humid day. Well, I'm just going to leave this greenhouse before this creature comes after me, <laughs> but uh, I'll check you later. right here 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 and here you have a bullet shaped screw that goes in if you tighten these bullet shaped screws too tightly then you won't be able to turn your hand wheel you only want to put these screws in uh so that it holds the bars in place, but you don't want it to hold the bars in tightly and you want the bars to have some play so that the hand wheel can freely move like so. Also, this little arm right here has to fit correctly inside of this groove or it won't allow the hand wheel to turn. Another challenge that you might face is with this screw right here. 
It is a triangular or cone shaped screw that takes a washer on the end and it connects the bottom shaft to the top. It's hard to get these lined up, but once you get it lined up, it's pretty easy to stick the screw in there and put the washer on. If this is too tight, then it will not allow for this to move freely. Also, there is a screw right here that is more so shaped like a cake in tiers. It has two tiers to it and it goes through here and then there's a bolt that goes here. Uh, this is what allows you to do your forward and reverse. And if this is too tight, then you won't be able to forward or reverse. So you need this to also be backed out and not in there really tight. Uh, so I would recommend using a ratcheting screwdriver and not tightening these, tightening these down really tight because they are hard to get out once you put them in there too deep. They're really hard to back out. So those are just a few things to note. Um, and you do need to have this right here so that it will go down inside of this arm when you turn the hand wheel. So you also have to make sure that that is lined up. And I'm trying to think if there's anything else to remember about this bottom part of the machine. Oh, these screws right here. You don't want them too tight either. I can actually loosen them with my hand. I just have them hand uh, tightened. Uh, because if you tighten these too much, also your hand wheel will not turn. So I spent like an hour and a half or so trying to get this to where the hand wheel would turn all the way around. And what I found out is that you really do have to get these screws somewhat loose. Uh, this right here is a wick that I just put into the machine. Uh, this one is just a cotton wick because that's what was in the machine before. Uh, I did not go with a felt wick for that because I was just trying to replace the wick with something similar to what was in the machine before. Uh, you have to do uh, putting the bottom part of the machine back together first because you need your hand wheel to turn for the next step. And the next step is to work on the upper part of the machine and putting that back together. So I'm just briefly going to show you. Let's see here. The hand wheel has to be able to move in order to put this part of the machine back together because this needs to be at its lowest point in order to be able to put the shaft in where your needle bar rests. Uh, once the needle bar is in, you have to adjust it to the correct height, which would require you to then put back together this bobbin uh, hook area. And that is really the next part of this project. So it is just really, really difficult for me to put this machine back together and record at the same time. But I do know that there's certain things that you all will want to see. Uh, of me putting this machine together. So I'm just going to show you the highlights of that. So when I got this Singer 15, I was excited because I was like, hey, I have a lot of Singer 15 parts here that will work uh, with this machine as I restore it. This is a Singer 15 bobbin. But what I didn't realize is that over the years, um, Singer had a number of different variations of bobbins for their Singer 15 machine. So if I go here and look at Andy Tube's channel, you can see this bobbin case here is opposite from the bobbin case that I have here. So this one has the finger leaning towards the right. That one has the finger leaning towards the left. I need the left leaning finger into the, my, my machine. And I will try to leave a link down in the description box below of the different bobbin variations that came out for the Singer 15 uh, so that you can determine which variation is yours. And don't mind my mess here. I have a ton of mess here in my room as I've been trying to work on putting this machine back together. Um, the next thing is this finger here. I took it out in order to clean it but I couldn't figure out how to put it back in and I didn't see any videos on how to do so. Uh, you have to lift, you have to turn the hand wheel so that this piece right here is right here at about one o'clock. Then 
you put this piece back in and there's a little knob on this piece right there and a knob has to go towards this wheel right here and you put it in there and there's a groove inside of this wheel and you can't really see it because of the shadows but um there's a groove right there that that knob fits into and i'm putting my uh screwdriver on the knob right now so the knob goes into that little groove and then you screw it into the machine in the back right here with this big screw uh, so that's how that works and then this should go up and down just fine without any problems i wish that i could say that this project was done but it is not because there are several things that need to be done on this machine before i can call it finished first and foremost i have the bake light here and as i was trying to put it onto the machine the switch broke off so that means that i need to 3d print a new switch for the bake light uh, secondly this right here uh, these were completely disintegrated on the machine and if you're not aware of what this is this is a motor brush cap uh, i need to find another motor brush cap that is the size same size and dimensions as this um, because i don't want to spend ten dollars a piece on motor brush caps as they charge online um, i think that is outrageous for that and I'll probably end up just 3D printing one, but first I have to uh, create a file in order to do that. And last but not least, I have this um, piece right here and I would have put it on the machine, but I haven't as of yet because it is missing the stitch regulator screw and I don't have a replacement for that and I haven't been able to find one online. I'm probably gonna have to improvise and come up with something. Um, but that is the video for today. I hope you really enjoyed this video. Please like, comment, and subscribe to receive more sewing related content.